Good morning, my name is Steve Moore with Organic Technology International and we're here at the Virgin Farms down in the South Valley of the Rio Grande in Albuquerque, New Mexico and I'd like to give you a tour of what we are doing here in our research center of growing energetic nutrient dense food to feed the world. Come with me. This isn't just a, a hobby farm, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extension to our business, Organic Technology International, is where we actually do our own soil testing, we formulated everything, and in formulation, we apply it, and then we get to eat the byproducts of it. So it's a complete cradle to grave concept that we wanted to be involved with, instead of explaining what we can do to someone else, and then go, yeah, that's great, but where's yours? Well, I would rather let them taste ours, rather than talk about it. This will address the uh, power lines that are in our, in our view that are actually right over the top of our corn that we've planted. And the direction that, uh, you know, to tap into nature, nature has a very interesting approach toward uh, trying to synchronize the energy fields. And what we've done is try to sort out the, the biology, chemistry, and physics to link this all together. And by mineralization into the soil, you're able to tap into the, the chaotic wavelengths off of this EMF, which is the electromagnetic field that is generated off of these power lines. Nature does that naturally by tapping into the magnetic field that's on Earth by drawing those, that electromagnetic field down into the soil from the high mineralization. They, they refer to that as paramagnetism in the soil. So actually trying to make these plants use some of that free energy, I looked at this as, as a challenge. I just wanted to understand how it functioned so that any of the energy coming off, and I think if you're quiet at the right time, you can actually hear the snapping and crackle of these power lines. They get an awful lot of bad press and they are, that's, that's appropriate if they don't understand how to utilize it. So if you're highly mineralized, then what you're doing, these plants have an, an energy field or an aura that, a, a, away from or shielding them and only allowing the energy that they want to absorb. So they're able to take off and do just that. Matter of fact, in such a way that a lot of these single kernel planted uh, seeds have offshoot and we'll have five or six stalks coming out and the, the mother plant will keep sending new sh stalks off and it'll only do that if there's enough energy to support not only herself but her offspring. So it's very evident in here there's an extremely high level of energy reserves not only to produce one ear off of the main stock, but to have numerous stocks and putting off numerous ears off of a single kernel. And most people look at it, you know, like there's some radiational problem. Well, actually it isn't. Nature has a, an incredible radiational aspect. If you can tap into it in a natural way, we should use it and we do use it. Nature uses it all the time. In preparing soils for this kind of a process of trying to get the energy or the physics built up in the soil and not just be concerned about the organics that everybody seems to be real driven by, um, in nature if you observe the high organic properties of what soil produces and the high mineral properties and the energy of the two, the high mineral um, soils are the best energy sources. All life begins from rock. So in the preparations of this soil, and it's ongoing, is that we brought in tons and tons per acre of high mineralized rock. What's unique about it is that once you establish that, it has a half-life of hundreds and hundreds of years, which is beautiful. The, the free energy of this plant will also um, allow more 
leaf mass, which is the solar panel to draw energy from our sun. That's, that's all we're doing is harvesting the sun. So monitoring the health of this plant is directly correlated to the immune system and it starts in the soil. When the soil biology is proper, the plants that are grown are proper and become more of a medicine rather than just a food. Here's, here's part of the fruit of the labor here is that this particular okra has a very, very unique taste. Um, a little different than, say, the greens that most everybody sees when they, and of course they ruin it because they fry it and uh, destroy all the enzy enzymatic activity of the plant. But these are excellent to eat. Matter of fact, a lot of the eating that we do on the farm is to actually taste test it in the field. It doesn't have to be cooked. It's actually better if you don't. Some of these tomatoes will go as, as much as a pound a piece. And the tonnage that'll come off of this is astronomical. An acre of tomatoes can exceed forty to fifty thousand dollars in income, just one acre, if grown and harvested and handled appropriately. And these tomatoes uh, that you see right now are right in the neighborhood of about sixty about seventy days old um, from seed. And in this, this is, this is what we want to demonstrate and show that in a tomato that is grown properly to its genetic potential, and mark these words because this is not to be confused with genetically modifying anything. God didn't make any mistakes. We're the ones with our arrogance that make the mistakes in trying to correct things that don't need to be corrected. The thicker this is in the middle, you can see there's not a lot of empty space and this will fill out and make a, a tremendous tomato, either for frying or just eating. We got 75 or 80 day acorn squash that we had off of here in 45 days. Harvest ready to eat from a seed. We have, we've been approached to, to take on a project on, a, on a, a major way to help manage and run a very, very large development like this, but in the thousands and thousands and thousands of acres. No matter how much money you have, you can't buy health unless you understand it and know where it begins and how, it, how it's created. We're just replicating things that have been going on for years, but it's been a lost art. The tomato is like a battery and it has a certain amperage of voltage that it produces based on the amount of minerals that are in it and the quantity or the quality of those minerals. Mm -hmm. when, they, when anybody or anything consumes that tomato or any other vegetation, they're actually consuming and living off of the energy, not the physical substance of it. If I eat something that is nutrient dense, such as stuff that we grew at the Virgin Farms, we don't need to eat near as much of it. The more shallow the food is, or the less substance it has in it, or energy, whether it's an animal or a human, they keep consuming it, trying to fulfill their appetite. So obesity is you're not able to burn off the calories or burn off the stuff that you don't need from that food. It's an overrated thing about what are the contents of the food stuff that we consume, whether it's on the package or stuck to a tomato or anything else. But the, the thing that is missed in that is the energy value, like voltage or horsepower or amperage electricity from that food. It has to put out a certain amount of sustainable energy. Feeding people on the planet is never going to end. If you're going to sustain life with six billion people on this planet, if you don't make a change, we're not going to be here. You know, we just had an election and change was what we needed. Well, nothing's going to change without making a change, and you can't keep putting money into that conventional mindset. So 
paradigm shift in how you grow food. There's a conventional method, there's an organic way, and then there'll be a virgin farming technique. And the virgin farming technique is to grow energetic, nutrient-dense food so that it actually has substance and value and sustainability. The science that I work with is similar to what NASA uses to tell you what's on Mars without ever sending a sample back. They, their acronym is XRD technology, which is kind of a radionics principle of scalar testing. So behind you, what we have done is we use this as our place for research, our own place that we can compare what other people are doing globally or in the state. They're growing something, we want to grow it, and then we can energetically test and know what the vi viability of the food is. The state has tons of natural minerals and nutrients to work with. We're trying to grow food and give it a name so that we can identify it and, and label it to where if it has a signature on it, you can assure that it's grown minerally, has energy in it to support your kids and yourself. We want to make sure that we set more people in place to do what needs to be done to carry this on, to grow with minerals and not just MPK nitrogen fertilizer from the chemical industry. Right here, there's a four foot swath from here to the chickens, 70 feet long. July 4th, we put 30 gallons of crude oil on this whole thing, all videoed. So what this, what we're going to demonstrate here is how we can use crude oil in its raw form as a, an incredible nutrient to grow crops in, as it is formed from organic material. We'll just re remediate this after we get the, this black gold Texas tea out of here on the ground. We'll remediate this with uh, some bacteria, certain nutrients that will break down the paraffin which is suppressing the oxygen and water penetration through this. So we'll treat this after we get it all saturated with our bacteria, Nature's Bio. We've done an awful lot of oil remediations and this is where we're gonna put in a demonstration of how and why crude oil has a better value than burning it in the energy, energy to grow vegetables. Going ahead and tilling in the uh, the oil in with the nature's bio, get it homogeneously blended, and we'll go ahead and seed it. And we treat it with our, our bacteria and the stuff that I do, environmental cleanups to mm -hmm. just growing, sure. getting the right balance of nutrients and, and biology in the soil. So in doing that, we treated this. And eight days after we treated it, we planted it. We are now planting the seeds through here in the oil garden. Eight days after that, we had the first little pictures were some of the little corn popping up through the ground. So it's about nine, nine weeks, nine to ten weeks, and this is what it looks like. Wow. Now this isn't look at it and it's toxic like all the other farm land that mm -hmm. we're, we're pulling food off with high aflatoxin levels. There's absolutely no aflatoxins in this. Hmm. And the energy level, as a, a, as a calibration of trying to understand, like a, a truck has horsepower and you hear that word, this, we need to function as humans in the four to 600 range of a vibrational energy field. This food that you have to eat to be able to maintain that needs to be at a higher order to be able to maintain that level. This is running anywhere from 480 to 530 just on the cycle of digestion of the carbon from that crude oil. You know how it, where it comes from? Jurassic vegetation, like coal and all the other things. 
it's more organic than any any fertilizer that most people ever use because what's happening is they're taking the chemicals and they extract out high volumes and saturate. Anything in excess is a toxin. We know that the, the transformation is going to take place. Whoa. Yeah, that's that's nine weeks from when it, when you saw that when only crude, crude oil was applied, mm -hmm. not when it was planted. So in doing that, what we're trying to also demonstrate is this facade of having this scary thing about oil spills and all the contamination. They do show, they will show some kind of somebody holding a little duck, greasy and duck, and trying that. to wash it off with Dawn soap. Okay, I understand that, but it's a short <clears throat> cycle. We're looking at the long term, and with crude oil dropping in price, and we're going to get away from that and use more free energy and things. What are we going to do with coal and oil? What we should be doing with it. It's more valuable to use that energy instead of burning it up in the atmosphere to grow and restore our agriculture and the food that we need to eat because it's the same food that was growing when dinosaurs walked around. And it all sounds kind of, you know, mystical, but at the same time, it's all factual. They live and, and, and were created with vegetation that was totally saturated with uh, all kinds of minerals, biology, chemistry, physics, quantum energy fields. And this is, this is just chia, chia seeds. So that's the kind of background of what we're trying to, you know, educate, inoculate, and, and transform of what we want to do with food. Farming the land, healing the spirit, and healing the heart. Desert Forge. Uh, Desert Forge is a unique program. It allows veterans that are coming back from the war zone come out and actually get involved and do some farming and then take practice in this uh, holistic healing. Hey, my name is Ivan Tafoya. Uh, I've been with Desert Forge for three years. Benefits I've, I've seen from it, you know, of course, there's, there's been some financial pay, there's been some pay, but I guess I give, it's helped me develop a sense of value, a sense of self-value. I, I didn't have that at all. You know, people ask me all the time about what is Desert Forge about? To sum it up, it's about empowerment. It's about empowering the veteran who's come home from the war. It's about empowering the young National Guard soldier who's trying to figure out his life. Making sure that the men and women who have sacrificed so much for our country have job opportunities when they return home is very important to us. And that is why we were so impressed by the work of Desert Forge Foundation. Desert Forge has made it its mission to provide returning veterans meaningful job training and employment that addresses their emotional, mental, and physical needs. My name is Nate Lynn from Legendary Man. We, uh, we found the Desert Forge Foundation just a couple of months ago, and I was really inspired by what they do and the mission that they have amongst bringing brotherhood to uh, combat veterans. Uh, we serve veterans who are returning from war or just returning from service. We also serve the community. We have a lot of folks in our program who are just regular folks who are struggling with addiction issues, uh, legal issues, etc. And Desert Forge serves all those folks. Hi, I'm Fred Avant, and uh, I got with the Warriors Desert Forge through a summit in Albuquerque. But then I heard Vic come up to speak. And I woke up, and I was, the way he talked, passionate, he had fire in his speech. He was getting a message to me. I got fired up on that. You know, we're able to grow food now and sell it in real time. We don't have to wait for anyone else to purchase from us. We can produce food and sell it in real time. That's a big deal. Uh, we've been having a lot of meetings uh, at the county uh, because 
we've got some bigger plans, right, for Desert Forge, and we've got some bigger uh, plans uh, for uh, promoting agriculture in the South Valley. Uh, Steve is a great champion for uh, uh, bringing a lot of these farms together in the South Valley, and we're going to move forward in a really positive way. Just always talking about how quickly we can take the food from harvesting it and putting it on the tables. And, and I think that we should help this project. I don't know if you, you agree. We should help this project take the food from behind me and put it on the school lunch table. Yeah. We want you to grow the food and to recruit and train and to provide the investment to the veterans and the families and let our office do the administrative work. Farming the land, healing the spirit, and healing the heart. Desert Forge.